Good evening. It's time for the visit. And I thank you for sticking with us and coming in out of the heat uh, at the end of the day, and we really appreciate that. Without further delay, I'm going to introduce my repeat guest, Paula Bonine, mm -hmm. my very good friend. Um, I had several calls on Paula. We did um, a rock show. Mm -hmm. And one of the things people wanted to know was why why we wasn't more technical about the rocks that we talked about. So you know me well enough. What do you think I said? <laughs> well, you were technical, only in a different perspective. There you go. Mm -hmm. We wanted to explain rocks to you, how they apply to people. Um, just picking them up on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, we did a really good job. We also made reference to a young lady. Her name is Ashley Bonine. Mm -hmm. And that's who we want to talk about today. She's the young lady that you saw in the opening shop. She's a little bigger now. Yeah, she's three years older now. Mm -hmm. And she is your daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do today is kind of tell Ashley's story and how she, her story intertwines with yours because you're her mother. Hmm. Hmm? Yeah, she's a pretty fascinating child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. I'm pretty blessed, I, mm -hmm. I must say. Um, well, I want to share something with the friends and, and you too. You already heard the story, so I'll tell it to you again. Um, and I think this is a good time to tell this to you. Uh, some people are on a different frequency. And um, technically, I'm not really sure what, you know, how we could put that together with molecules and chromosomes and things like that. But some of us are just a little different. So we are sensitive to noises and lights and electrical currents. Mm -hmm. And I happen to be one of those people that acts as a conductor. And that means sometimes, well, not sometimes. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> I interfere with equipment, like mm -hmm. light, uh, blow light bulbs. Yep. Mm -hmm. I walk into businesses and... Uh, Things copy, stop working. Copy <laughs> machines stop, um, cash mm -hmm. registers. Um, I've never explained it to anybody, and they probably don't know why it's happening, so they probably hate to see me coming the next time. You know? <laughs> yeah. But the, the reason I needed to address that is because ever once in a while, I'll make a reference to that. And most of my guests, uh, since they do know me, so when we say, do you know what I mean? Of, of course they do. And so now you know it also. So the next time we're talking about we, uh, I'm going somewhere and things blow up, and that's why. And the reason that fit in so good today is because Ashley is one of those mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And noises just really bother her. To a very great deal. I couldn't run my vacuum cleaner for mm -hmm. three years with her in the house. Mm -hmm. I had to wait till she was to school. Mm -hmm. Because the noise would, she would be terrified. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally terrified. I remember a little incident where, um, my burglar alarm oh, went off. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't she think like that. No, we <laughs> you had to take the battery out. <laughs> got it. We did. Yeah, Your so. smoke detector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, smoke detector. In, in the cropper. Yeah. So Ashley is a real neat young lady. And um, like I said, this being her mother here, I'm going to kind of let you start at the beginning. Well, um, she was my 11th pregnancy mm -hmm. and my first child to survive because I have a hard time with pregnancies and she was born two and a half months early. Mm -hmm. And because of that, she has cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I'm learning a lot of life lessons. And mm -hmm. I, I think that she is too. I think. Um, you really helped me out with that a lot because I used to carry a lot of guilt um, about that until you told me about another young boy with cerebral palsy that mm -hmm. had mentioned to you that he, if he didn't have cerebral palsy, he wouldn't be doing what he was there to do. Yeah, he was in, uh, in Edwardsville, uh, Illinois. He, he actually, he was 15 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had went there to investigate some crop circles, and that's when I met this young gentleman. 
and we talked about things, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. We had talked about ADD mm -hmm. uh, children, and uh, you know, but I was telling him that in my travels, I found that, you know, they're not too fa they're not really too fast. They're just born with the frequency back to the frequency mm -hmm. of the earth, and they need to be where they are at this time. Mm -hmm. We are too slow. Mm -hmm. So if we say to them, um, "I'm a little slow. Could you slow it down for me?" They will actually pay attention to you. And then when you say, "Okay," and that's their cue to go back to their to their their normal, normal rhythm. speed because yeah. mm -hmm. we are just too slow for them you see because by the time we say something they already know the outcome mm -hmm. and that's really necessary because of the frequency of the earth right now anyway to get back to this young man I don't remember his name unfortunately and he made uh, at the age of 15 he was a wonderful uh, very talented graphic designer and web webmaster he made web pages for people and uh, and he said to me, the reason I'm in this wheelchair, I chose to be here like this, because this is the only way I can do my work. If it wasn't like that, I'd be out chasing girls in different mm -hmm. in a different capacity. Mm -hmm. And I, in fact, I put it in my book. Mm -hmm. And Ashley is part of my mm -hmm. uh, the story in my book. Mm -hmm. Do you know what we should do? Uh, we couldn't bring Ashley. Uh, she probably wouldn't have sat here for a whole hour. No. So instead what we did, we did an insert. Yeah. Um, so on Saturday I went to Ashley's house and um, asked her some questions and did an interview with her. And um, so we're going to share that with you. And the, um, the young lady in the picture with her is my granddaughter, Ebony, which is also my camera person sometimes and my mm -hmm. graphic person. And so the clip is of the two of them in Ashley's. Um, home, mm -hmm. and um, so I thought I would we would introduce you to her in that capacity. So if we could roll that clip, and it's with the audio. So with us with today we have Ashley and one of my camera persons, Ebony. Hi, Ebony. Hi. Hi, Ashley. How are you? Fine. I was gonna talk to you a little bit today about cerebral palsy and your mother tells me that you can probably tell me all about it so you want to give it a shot yeah okay well i go to two i go to therapy on tuesdays and wednesdays i mean mondays and wednesdays and on mondays i go to visit Anne. on wednesdays i go to the same place but i visit her Heather helps me play and write in things. Anne helps me walk and other things. So Heather's your therapist, huh? Heather and Anne are my two therapists. Uh huh. So I see Heather on Wednesdays and Anne on Mondays. And you go to regular school? I go to kindergarten. Oh, kindergarten. Oh. Kindergarten or work with you. Uh huh. Next year I'll be in first grade, but I'm now six. And June seventeenth I'll graduate. And also, cerebral palsy is so horrible. I can't walk, but I have a walker and wheelchair. You can now see, but you haven't seen the walker yet. Mm hmm. But you do. You can work on a computer. You do a lot of work on your computer, don't you? Yes, and very good work. And I play Sega a lot, especially when friends are over. Every day. You and I visit uh, quite often. You know, for for quite a while. And you are interested in UFOs. Yeah. Uh huh. I know that soon I will kind of get out of several party, I think. You might be right there. Now, the other thing I want to ask you about, what do you think you're going to be, what would you like to be when you, when you grow up? Um, a mom's going. A mom. 
going to be a mom? Yeah. Oh, cool. I can get kids with, kids with cerebral palsy and kids who can't walk. Oh, I can hold up to two or three kids at once. Like I have imaginary friends there, my kids right now. And you have a real life repo there, don't you? Yeah, you can he's real mean. And I don't like him very much. Oh, why is that? Because... I just don't like babies very much. Except when they grow, when he grows up, I'll like him more. I think that's pretty normal. Oh, Ebony, you have brothers and sisters. You feel the same way? Kind of, yeah. Kind of. So, you see, that's pretty normal. That's pretty normal. Now, I'm going to take a, a wider shot. Your mom let me take a picture of that beautiful Mandela behind you. She has the neatest stuff. And w we went to the beach the other day. Did you have a good time? Yeah. Uh-huh. I went to the beach to Ocean Shores one time. Uh huh. And on June third, I went to a field trip in school. I only was there in the morning. Then after the field trip, I returned home. So, but you can do a lot of stuff, right? Right. And we went to Farmers Market. Uh huh. And Tommy State Park. Uh huh. And the lunch lounge was great. I got my favorite foods, Teddy Grahams, Fritos, orange juice to drink. So all in all, life is pretty cool and pretty normal, huh? Yeah. What would you, if you had anything to say to the people, um, what would you tell them? What do you like them to do for you? Um, come over and play with me. Help me with Sega and help me get better at computer. Do nice things for me and, and play Sega with me before bed besides helping me with my Sega. So that's two things that they do to me. Sega. I take me rides for school. I do that take me rides to school, then I ride the bus home. Okay. Well, it was really nice for you to share some time with the friends. And we thank you very much. And you too, Ebony, for um, always being there when we need you. And uh, next time you come into the studio, and then we will talk to you in person. And I thank you very, very much, okay? Okay. Now can we... Now do you want to see the Sega? <laughs> I have to get on my... Yeah, that little girl has a memory and a mind like a steel trap, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah. Um, when she started talking, mm -hmm. um, she just started speaking sentences. And she would repeat everything that you said exactly as you had said it, enunciating every single word precisely. And her memory... I'm really bad with names, and her memory is so good. Even at two years, two and a half years old, we would meet people, and she would remember their name. And I could ask her two or three weeks later mm -hmm. who that was, and she could tell me who they were. Now, we had a, uh, that's really the only thing in this whole story, because then I'm going to give it over to you so you can talk more about, you know, the thing at hand. Uh, so this part is sort of uh, reminiscing for me, if you will. H how old was she when you brought her to my house the first time? About three, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, she was almost, she was between three and four. She was almost four, probably, because it was about two years ago. Okay, so let's so be I, generous. Right after her birthday. She, she was four. And um, as the friends know, I, uh, this RV that I do my traveling in, it's called the Cropper. Mm -hmm. And so we said... While well, she came and looked at all the things, and she recognized, she thought she recognized uh, people in pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we took her back mm -hmm. into your room, mm -hmm. your little glass room, and um, yeah, she recognized Tim. Mm -hmm. 
as her she was pilot. The, the pilot, yeah. <laughs> her and ship that she talked about all the time. Yeah, when she said the pilot, we didn't really pay much attention to that. And it wasn't until we got into that cropper where what she had said back there made a lot of sense. Now you share with the friends what happened when we got into the cropper. She beelined for the, for the control panel yes. <laughs> and started talking about all the molecules mm -hmm. and all the little switches and what everything was for and mm -hmm. just started going off and there she was explaining everything about mm -hmm. Preparing my spaceship. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then when she went back into your house, she was in your spaceship. <laughs> she was in it, yeah. yeah. Uh, but not only that, she remembered when she was born. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, because um, there were three lights that came mm -hmm. with her. And I always thought they were her guardian angels. And, mm -hmm. and I guess she told you that uh, they weren't her angels. They were people just bringing her here. Mm -hmm. well, you were there, so she told yeah. both of us. Yeah, they were just delivering mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And at the time, um, when it was a little touch and go, you put a crystal in her incubator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then a few m months ago, I was rather ill. And so you brought me that crystal. Mm -hmm. And you said to me, well, here, you're going to need that for a while. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, it's time for me to return your crystal. Oh, thank you. That's the bottom half of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it broke. That just crushed me, but... Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. No, I didn't know they come no, back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, the name of the show is um, Disabled by Whose Definition? Mm. And uh, since I'm somewhat... Um, an outsider, I thought maybe, well, we had decided that you could kind of give the friends a crash course on what's important and what isn't. So you want to take a shot at that? Yeah. Um, the one thing that I've noticed um, since, since Ashley's come into our life is that people, um, people fear what they don't understand. And a lot of times, rather than coming up and speaking to someone, they stand back in silence and build their own thoughts that usually don't have a basis. And I would just like to um, let them have a little bit of enlightenment on mm -hmm. who's really disabled. <laughs> exactly. Because Ashley may not be able to walk like the rest of the kids, but um, she's far from disabled. In, in the sense of her purpose for being here and being able to achieve it. Um, and I think people get so tied up in um, the physical of mm -hmm. life that, that they miss the spiritual part of it. And they, they kind of overlook what's really behind the eyes. And they don't see. And those people who um, might be in a wheelchair or or whatever their challenge causes them to, to be in, um, they don't look past that to see that there is a human being there that has something to give you. And I found that um, people who are challenged like that mm -hmm. seem to have a lot more to give than, than what meets the eye because um, the lessons that Ashley's brought to me and, and people that come in contact with her, everybody gains something from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, she sure she's <laughs> amazing. taught me something. So I come from a culture where, the, uh, where we, we believe that um, parents know who their children are before birth and vice versa, where the children pick their parents. Mm -hmm. And I think in your case that really applies, doesn't it? Um, I've become aware of that. Mm -hmm. I used to wonder why she picked me. Mm -hmm. and, and you informed me, as a matter of fact, why she picked me, because, because I was able to give her what she needs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that is one of the things that started me looking at myself differently, mm -hmm. instead of just that little narrow vision of what I thought I was.
Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's like myself, you know, I'm not a patient person. I want everything done right now. You mm -hmm. know, it, well, more so before, you know. I'm Yesterday would be good. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a little more, now that I'm older, um, I, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, things are a lot more settled for me, you know, mm -hmm. but patience. So I would not have done well um, with a child. However, I have physical challenges that means nothing to me. I work around it really easy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and so I can understand it from that that aspect is you just get used to something and then it becomes normal. Whatever your reality is, exactly. is a normal for mm -hmm. you. Um, just like whatever you believe in is going to be your reality, regardless of whether anyone else believes in it or not. If you believe in it and it holds um, faith with you, then that's your reality. Mm -hmm. Now, Ashley is mentally so advanced that yeah. uh, her newest thing is she's going to invent... Oh, it's a new computer program, mm -hmm. Windows 100. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will talk to you, and whenever an error comes up, it will fix it by itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. She will probably achieve that. I would not doubt it. Yeah. And I wouldn't even be surprised if she did it before she was 12. I mean, she's mm -hmm. just... She's real amazing with her ideas. Her imagination is mm -hmm. amazing. She's, she has lots and lots and lots of imaginary friends mm -hmm. that come in and out of her life. That um, They almost don't seem imaginary because they're so real to her that they seem real. Well, sometimes I wonder if they are real, I, period. Yeah, see, you know? yeah. Yeah, so she taught you some of that, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she teaches me every day. She's the best teacher I've ever had mm -hmm. in my life, definitely. And then you have a second child, Billy? Mm-hmm. He came to help with Ashley. He did, <laughs> yeah. Bless his heart. What a love child. Mm -hmm. He's a, he was a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. As well, she was telling well, me. Well, he, the he shouldn't have been yeah. such a surprise because you told me I, he was yeah. coming. <laughs> Nevertheless, he was a surprise and he got here speaking some foreign language. <laughs> yeah. We don't, and, and he still speaks that language. I mean, and, and I haven't really forced him to let go of it because mm -hmm. it's his native tongue, but it would be interesting to know what it is because it's not, it's not the normal jibber jibber that you would hear from, no. a, from a child. It's, no, it, it actually sounds like a language and, mm -hmm. and he, ver when he speaks to you, he knows exactly what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And you can tell with his expressions, and he's quite expressful. <laughs> well, I can go further than that. Uh, he, he talks to me on the phone, mm -hmm. and then I don't see his expressions, but I know exactly what he means. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not verbally, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he likes to talk to you on the phone. He'll keep you on the phone for a long time. Long time, and then they say, you want to talk to Billy? And I'll say, no. No. <laughs> and there he is anyway. Oh, let me say hi. <laughs> yeah. um, I asked Ashley, uh, what is it that she would like the people around her to do for her? And her answer was really interesting. Um, yeah, come and visit and play with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, I was 38 when I had Ashley, mm -hmm. and my husband and I, Ray, he, we're both workaholics, mm -hmm. and that's just literally all we did. We managed apartments, and, and he cleaned carpets, and then we played music on weekends in a band that we had. So that's all we did. And when Ashley came into the picture, um, that's probably been the hardest, and, and, and we're still struggling with it, to break away Mm -hmm. from that habit of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, work is good, but it should have its limit. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't know any children her age. Mm -hmm. Ashley never even saw another kid other than like at the doctor's office mm -hmm. until she got into uh, preschool at two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. And she wanted nothing to do with them. They could not communicate with her on her level. On her level, yeah, and but she, how do you do that? I mean. So she was really tuned into children that were 9 to 18. Yeah, she's over everybody's head, including ours sometimes. Yeah, you know. well, she blows mm -hmm. the teenagers away. Mm -hmm. My niece uh, was 13, she was staying with us, and it was a real struggle for her because at, at five years old, Ashley could read better than mm -hmm. she could, and, co and her comprehension and vocabulary was bigger than, than hers. So, 
yeah, it was quite challenging for her. It made her stop and think about things a little bit mm -hmm. on paying attention. And then as a result of her abilities, um, I understand there were some changes made in, uh, in the rules in the school. You want to share that? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, something that people might think is, is um, taking away from you is actually giving to you. Mm -hmm. And Ashley's disability created a situation where when she was in her second year of preschool and we were living in Tacoma, um, this particular school district had a policy from, from the beginning, over 25 years, that preschool and kindergarten chil children were not allowed to use the library. Mm -hmm. They weren't allowed to go there. They, they could not be in the library. And to me, Ashley had a library before she came home from the hospital. Mm -hmm. And a lot of children <coughs> don't have that opportunity. And a, a child needs to learn mm -hmm. where to find books free. Mm -hmm. And that's the library. Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote a couple of letters to our senators and Congress, and within a week, um, I got a phone call from her teacher thanking me because she now had library privileges, and it changed through the entire school district. Mm -hmm. Because I just couldn't see. Ashley reads too much, and too, she has to go to the library. <laughs> she does, so, yeah. Yeah, she needs it. So um, the other kids consequently got to have that privilege as well. Sometimes I tell the friends that uh, usually when we get here, you know, when we are born, we have a purpose. And uh, sometimes it takes us 40 years or 30. How many? 43. Now, how old are you? 43. 43. Okay. So let's say it took you 42. 43. Yeah. Well, 42 years and a few and still months <laughs> yeah, to, to get where you are. And uh, But sometimes these young ones, um, they get here and they pretty much know what it is they're supposed to do. And so as young as she is, she's doing her work, mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. So I believe she has her head together and her purpose. Uh, you know, she knows what her purpose is. She's a lot known better from than the beginning. Us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She came, she was about four years, when she was four, she came out of her room once and very matter of factly comes up, crawls out and looks at me and she goes, Mom, I have to tell you, I am an adult trapped in a child's body, mm -hmm. and I would appreciate it if you treat me as such. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and turned around she and left. back to her room she went. And it was like, yeah. I didn't have a doubt in my mind that she was speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. Because um, she is a, she's an old soul, by, for sure. She's, she's been my teacher for many, many, many years. Yeah, well, Lifetimes. I, ha I had no doubt about that when she came and... Um, uh, not, maybe we want to explain that. Now, I have a granddaughter. Her name is Vanya. And uh, she started talking with a, in sentences when she was a few months old, you know. Um, she, she is not um, di disabled. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about that word here in just a few minutes. Um, but one of the things that was troubling her, she had problems with squares on the floor. Um, the white ones was okay, but any other colored square, I think she thought she was going to fall. Mm -hmm. And um, we couldn't figure out why she thought she was going to fall, you, you know. Yeah, but that was because it's your kitchen floor. Right. And, but then when Ashley came, we kind of uh, figured it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was the bottom of your spaceship. That's right. Yeah. And so I think Ashley and Vanya was in the same place, except... Ashley knew where she was yeah. because she was over the rainforest and looking down. Mm -hmm. And touching the trees. And touching the trees. And Vanya just thought she was going to fall out or whatever. Well, when Ashley first got on your floor, she grabbed your that chair leg because mm -hmm. she thought she was going to. And she even said, oh, I'm going to fall through the Oh, OK. And then and yeah. then she was OK. She didn't even finish her sentence. Mm -hmm. but And she realized that, that it was a floor. But yeah, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, it, it was. And it sort of answered that question. So. So some of these children are so intelligent and are so advanced that we, we can't even we can't even touch that. Like they said, don't you can't touch that. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? Now you had a suggestion to uh, as far as the word disabled, and that's why we spelled it like that. In fact, you're the one that picked that that title for the show. They, um, I think, I think it's been mislabeled. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think people are disabled. I think they're challenged. Mm -hmm. And it's a better description because um, 
because of the way our society seems to program us into thinking, um, people think that a, dis a disability makes you different mm -hmm. from everyone else, and therefore they're not as readily acceptant, mm -hmm. acceptable. And um, I kind of believe that it's not the person who's challenged that has the problem. Mm -hmm. It's the people who aren't. Mm -hmm. Because um, every day I see the strength. Ashley has more strength than anyone I've ever known. And she, it takes her 10, 15 times as much energy mm -hmm. to do the simplest task that we take for granted every day. And she doesn't take anything for granted um, because it's, it's such an achievement for her to gain it mm -hmm. if it's physical. Yeah. Mental, it's not. <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, her answer to me when I asked her uh, what she want to be, you know, mm -hmm. she said a mother. Yeah. And um, then she immediately mentioned that she could have children with cerebral palsy or not. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so, um, that was kind of, the way she put that in there is like, um, that was important to her. Um, the, is it the knowledge or is it just... You know, Ashley's never seen herself as different from anyone else. Exactly. Until, mm -hmm. until recently when people point out her limitations. Mm -hmm. I think her limitations frustrate her um, because, like any child, she would want to go out and do the things that other kids are doing. Um, but at the same time, um, She's so advanced mm -hmm. in so many things that, that she gets to help the teacher to help other kids learn how to read and, and different things. And she's kind of a star in, in the class with, with a few of the other children that are in her class that are um, quite gifted as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's, it's not so much her perspective or, or even any person that's challenged their perspective of, of who they are or what they can accomplish. It's more the limitations that other people put upon them. Mm -hmm. There is a, a, a lady friend of mine, she works with people with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so amazing that uh, I got to meet some of them, you know. Are they amazing? And what wonderful people. I oh. mean, I think on a spiritual level, they are. They are way ahead of you us. Know, they are wonderful. I think they're they're truly tuned to the reality of what love really is. Exactly. The love connection of the whole universe. Um, and they don't have they don't have the the means of clouding it with untruths and things mm -hmm. that that don't mean anything. Um, they just are there as it is, and this is what it is. And that's all they have to give is their love. And that's all they focus on. I don't know if I'm going to tell the story right or not, but I think I had mentioned it to you. I had went to Fred Meyers uh, to get something one day. And oh, yeah. I, I did tell this mm -hmm. story now. So if you remember, if I don't tell it right, correct me. And there was a, a young uh, person with Down syndrome, maybe mm -hmm. 15 or 16 years old. And he had... Um, he had picked up a uh, a video, you know, a video movie that he wanted to buy. And uh, I mean, he had a big smile on his face. He, he was just glowing all over the place. So he um, he had the video in his hand and he got to the cash register and the lady, um, she rang it up and he was like $2 in something short. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says, well, she rang it up and she said, that's, that's so and so much. And then she never gave him a chance to dig in his pocket to look for the rest of the money because it probably took him a little long, would have taken him mm -hmm. a little longer to... She probably just assumed he didn't it, have it. He's right. People assume. It, right. She assumed that. And so she yanks that, um, she yanks that video uh, uh, this way and, and voided the cell and put it away. And, uh, and the, the Smile just disappeared. Crushed him, didn't it? And I said, what are you doing? And she says, he doesn't have enough money. And I said, yes, he does. And I had like $3 in the whole world. You know, when I'm broke, I'm broke. You know yes. that. <laughs> and so I handed her the $3 and uh, it came to $2.54 or something. And that smile was back on his face. And everybody in line, um, it was such a lesson for them, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And hopefully they were able to grasp it. I, I hope so, but there was a real lesson just to assume that, you know, but that, that smile just changed the whole energy again. Now, if, by the time this airs, it's going to be several weeks, mm -hmm. there was um, the, the gentleman that had um, unfortunately killed his mother and his niece, and uh, he, then he had the accident on, the, on I-5. Oh, yeah. And he, he ran over the person with the uh, motorcycle, and mm -hmm. then he went to, he killed another woman and went yeah. into the house. And um, that was a real unfortunate incident. And uh, for some reason, I watched it um, because there was a real lesson here. As unfortunate as the story was, it showed that one person can affect thousands of people. It was right before Memorial Day, remember? Mm -hmm. They had to shut down the freeway. Nobody could go anywhere. Mm -hmm. One person, thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the same is in reverse. But it's the same in everything mm -hmm. because we're all connected. Mm -hmm. and, and all of our actions affect everyone else. Even if we don't know them and they're halfway across the country mm -hmm. or in another country altogether across the ocean, mm -hmm. um, our actions affect mm -hmm. each other. So usually we notice the negative. That's my point here. Yeah. Uh, when something negative happens and it's that chain reaction, we notice it. So how do we know when we do something good? We just have to know because sometimes we don't see the results of how kindness and love and, and the differences that we have, how it, it really benefits everybody in a positive way over and over like that. Well, I'm a firm believer that out of everything, mm -hmm. there is something positive to be gained. So it doesn't matter how tragic anything is, mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on the positive. Because I find it's, it's not only easier, it, it's definitely much kinder to my heart. Mm -hmm. So um, unfortunately, we as a society tend to focus on the negative. Mm -hmm. and what we neglect to understand is that um, every time we focus on a negative energy, we're having a negative thought mm -hmm. reinforced. And that energy is going out into the universe and affecting everyone else, re which plants more negativity. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of feeds off of itself. And if we would just take a moment and turn the negative to the positive, then we would be generating that. Mm -hmm. And people would look to the light of things instead of looking at what they think isn't quite up to their standards. Up to par, exactly. Yeah, up to par. So get back to Ashley. This is my little bridge here, back to Ashley. How anything connected with her and people with um, people that are different it is mostly all positive, all positive experiences and life lessons that we really need as a whole. Yeah, some of them come a little uh, hard on you. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, they're all positive. Um, even even in, in Ashley's cerebral palsy, which a lot of people would view as a negative thing mm -hmm. because she's not normal. Um, I think she's way beyond normal. Exactly. Because, and not just because of her mind, but because of, of her soul, her spirit. She carries with her, um, she carries a hope. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's here to give us, um, is hope. Because we can, we can, we can all um, get beyond mm -hmm. any limitation if we choose to focus that way. And it, I think she's here to give us hope. From a medical point of view, um, could, could you explain exactly what cerebral palsy is? Because I'm sure some of the friends don't know. Cerebral palsy is caused by a lack of oxygen to the brain. Mm -hmm. And um, what it does is it affects your nervous system's ability to receive the message from your brain. So here your brain is thinking exactly what it needs to, 
and your body is not receiving the message, your nervous system isn't receiving the message, so when you tell your hand to go over and reach for this cup, um, Ashley has to think of every motion she takes mm -hmm. to get to that cup and then to grasp it and hold on to it. Mm -hmm. We would just take it for granted to go get the cup. Um, and every, every, every move she makes is, is like that. She has to. And I think that when we get back to that part of her choosing to have mm -hmm. cerebral palsy to gain her purpose, um, that's part of the reason why. Because when you have to focus on something so precisely mm -hmm. and you have to generate so much energy to every different place to get it to do what you want, of course it's frustrating, but once it's accomplished, you see that there are no limitations. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe that was because she is here for such a big reason mm -hmm. um, that she needed to experience that to understand that the limitations that are going to be placed in front of her in the future are not limitations, they're stepping stones and opportunities to, to accomplish why she is here. Yeah, and then of course she's very fortunate to have a wonderful father too. Oh, yeah, spoils yeah. her rotten, just like his wife. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, well, yeah. you probably have one of the best husbands anybody would care to. And, and uh, mm -hmm. you were telling me, you told him that to keep it up because he'll be stuck with <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. With that. <laughs> we hadn't even been going out for two weeks. And I told him he had to stop spoiling me so much because he was going to be stuck with me for the rest of his life. And he just thought that was so funny and he would just mm -hmm. continue on. and. Now, every once in a while, I catch him <laughs> with his frustration going, oh, uh, <laughs> made him eat his words. <laughs> what did I make? <laughs> yeah. so. And I always remind him that he did mm -hmm. create that. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, sometimes you hear where, where this, the, the strain of the family life in, in a setting like that is very hard. So, so she has chosen her parents wisely. Yeah. She really has. Yeah. You know. um, well, sort of on a personal there, what would you like to put out there? What is it that you need from society for yourself first and then for your daughter? Um, gee, there's a lot of things I would like to have from society, but <laughs> <laughs> a little help would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to, I think what I would really like society to do is to take a moment and reevaluate their thinking and their views and stop and think that, that possibly what they're thinking is the reality of a situation might be a little different if they stretched it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of took it one step further and didn't block themselves into a narrow view because. Um, I think that because I believe disabled is mislabeled. Mislabeled, exactly. Um, that because of that, um, we've created fear mm -hmm. in people because they don't understand and they don't know. And that's, that's where fear comes, is from not knowing. And that fear stops them from, from opening to a whole new awareness of life. And then they're trapped in this little humdrum little path that they get on that doesn't go anywhere but in a circle. Yeah, you see, unfortunately, we live in, in a time in, in a part of society where unless it's illegal, it, it's not outstanding. So mm -hmm. I don't know how many laws there are on the book in reference to disabled, mm -hmm. um, you know, there shouldn't have really been any need for that in the first place. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I understand where the need came as far as to help someone mm -hmm. because um, Washington State is probably, um, this state probably respects and takes care of people who are challenged mm -hmm. better than any state I've ever seen. The opportunities that they offer for them, um, it wasn't until Ashley was about three years old that I found out about um, DDD, mm -hmm. um, the Department of Disabled Disabilities, mm -hmm. and um, or developmental disabilities, and 
through that, she gained, like I have 96 hours a month that I could have someone come in and help me mm -hmm. if I could find someone who could do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have, and, and she has a medical coupon that, that is based on her income, mm -hmm. not, not ours. So when she needs a wheelchair, if her insurance doesn't cover it, the medical coupon does. Mm -hmm. So she's guaranteed that whatever needs that she has, mm -hmm. at least until she's 21, right to her education, they have to meet them, and they will, and mm -hmm. they do. And, and I really respect this state mm -hmm. a lot for that, because um, like in Colorado, it's not like that at all. And you're on your own for the most part. And so we're very fortunate to be here. And Ashley was fortunate to be born in the state. So there are support groups, of course, that there's um, a listen PAVE, to parent to parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of support groups. I haven't really gotten involved in them a whole lot. I need to branch myself out of there. I've kind of mm -hmm. gotten my own little self living in my own little cubicle. Mm -hmm. um, when it gets so busy and there's so much that you have to do, I'm, we run a home, a business. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and rocks, and, like and, and my rocks, <laughs> <laughs> takes up a lot of your time. Yeah. yeah. Um, excuse me. What do you think your need is for Ashley? You know, she told us what she wanted. She wanted people to come spend time with her and play mm -hmm. video games and things. Um, from a parent's point of view, what is it that you would like for the people around you to do for your child? Excuse me. Um, Treat her like a human being and not mm -hmm. be afraid of her. Um, accept her as the individual that she is and mm -hmm. the gifts that she has to bring and not um, stop at her wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I notice a lot of people when we go out into public and stuff, um, the first thing that, that they see, the first thing that stops them is her wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And then she's kind of... Um, outspoken and, and ready to go out there and meet people, so she'll start talking to them. Mm -hmm. And then they realize that there's somebody beyond that wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And I would just like people to um, acknowledge that before, mm -hmm. you know, she has to show them. Now, an another thing that, um, now I run into that a lot, um, because of the disability laws that we have, um, you have a you have a disability sticker on mm -hmm. your van, mm -hmm. and um, because of my back and the times that I either can't breathe, you know, mm -hmm. or can't walk, so do I. Mm -hmm. And so when you when we park somewhere, first thing people will just stop in their track, like they look at you. You can't park here. Well, they don't know what comes next. Mm -hmm. You see, and then sometimes I get out of my car, and they look at me like, but they don't know. Yeah. What's next? You see what I mean? It it kind of makes you think about walking a mile in someone else's shoes. They are shoes. so rude. Yeah, people yeah. are so rude. Well, I think they get so tied up in themselves mm -hmm. that they um, they don't they don't see beyond mm -hmm. their own self. Yeah, and it seems everything has to be in one category, like in in this basket here, you know. Uh, but the law defines disabled, you know, in from, from, from here to there. Right. And um, I want the friends to know nobody is going to um, to give you any privileges or help unless you really are disabled by government um, specifications, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And so the, um, the name of the show was Disabled by Whom's Definition. And so I think what we kind of showing here is that whoever the who is, um, I think they know themselves. I kind of wonder where they got their definition and and who I don't know that. that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think society in a whole mm -hmm. needs to reevaluate mm -hmm. uh, a lot of their positions on on mm -hmm. a lot of different things because. They limit everyone's view. Everyone's, that's right. Everyone's. That's right. Because we as a people tend to follow, you know, whoever's leading us. Mm -hmm. 
And if that person has a limited vision, ours will be limited too. Which flips the whole thing and then really they are dis... They're disabled. There you go. Yeah, because they're missing everything. Missing everything, yeah. All, everything. Mm -hmm. The blessings and the joys and the lessons mm -hmm. and everything. I parked one time and there was a gentleman, he, uh, I got out of the car and he came running and he said, you can't park here. Uh, he was in one of those spaces himself mm -hmm. and I said, I didn't know they let blind people drive. And he said, you're not blind. And I said, I know, but you must be mm -hmm. if you cannot see that decal in my window. Mm -hmm. And it, sometimes we even have to take an approach like that and put it right back in, in, in the lap here. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's almost time to go again. Really? Yeah, it's just uh, we, we wow. just have time. So on a personal note, you would you like to uh, say something? Oh, I would just like to... Thank you, Universe, for blessing me with my children and my family and my husband and my dear friends. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully blessing uh, humanity out there with a new insight. That's something what we to need, think a, about. New, a new insight. Yeah. And um, so if people see you in town with Ashley, do you object to, you don't object oh, to love to Oh, not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Please say yeah. hello. But what this is the new thing, you know, the other thing sometimes, you know, people don't want to approach us because it's not okay to speak to, to strangers, you know. You know, when it, back in Colorado, people talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were yeah. no strangers. Every, you, people greeted you on the street because you had a smile on your face and, and, and you put it on theirs. Mm -hmm. And when we first came here, that was the first thing I noticed mm -hmm. was people are just in their own little tiny space mm -hmm. and they don't go out of it and they're in this little tiny trap. And it um, makes for a very limited view of life. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, as you know, I travel quite a bit too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed that Russia 23 is starting to do a little better. Um, mm -hmm. We could improve our driving and all that. But <laughs> well, that's because they have so many Canada and, and yeah. Oregon driving through here too. Yeah, so so, but as a whole, I think we're working on it, and it's it's the courage that friends like you have to come forward and and share these very intimate thoughts with us, and um, so we we really grateful, you know, that you did share this time. Oh, I'm grateful that you gave mm -hmm. me the time to share it. That was very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And whoever took care Ashley because she really wanted to her come daddy. And, you know, <laughs> it's her daddy. Yeah. And so all in all. Um, I hope we kind of put kind of a, we didn't really expect to totally explain the subject to you, just kind of from a, from a people point. And that's why this show is called A Visit with a Person of High Strangeness or Two or Three or Sometimes. Two or three. <laughs> yeah. um, we just want to give it a human perspective of the challenges and you know how we work around it? Just like to make them stop and think for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, just open your perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that the only thing that stops a new perspective mm -hmm. is an old one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have people stories for you here, and the little son there. Her daddy made that for her. Yeah. And by the way, all the things on the table, um, Ashley, those are her favorite things, she and likes this. Uh, she wanted to share that with you. And in, in rocks, of course. Being your daughter, she loves rocks. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. She was probably tuned into them before I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so just, you know, just stop and talk to new people and, like you say, get a different perspective. And, and again, we're really happy that you um, spent this time with us, that you are a regular uh, uh, drop in at our, uh, at these little visits that we have here. And we're just adding more and more. And to all the friends in Anchorage, uh, we're going overseas now in places. Um, thank you for coming out of the weather and um, heat, snow, whatever it is today, because we're taping the show. And again, um, i like to thank Paula. And we wish you goodbye now. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm glad you came. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.